Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Legal Geeks. With me, as always, is Josh Gilliland. Hey, Josh, how are you? Great, Jessica. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm very excited. We are going to talk about one of the biggest, most well-known science fiction television series today, although I have to make a confession right up front. I have it. A friend has loaned me the entire series on DVD, but I have yet to watch the new series. I've seen some of the old ones, and I've never seen the new ones. That's okay. And of course, this is, I, should, I guess that we should say, <laughs> we should say what uh, show we're even talking about, and it is, Josh, you can tell. Battlestar Galactica. Now, a, a funny little thing about Battlestar Galactica, this might have been the first sci-fi show I actually remembered, because it premiered on my birthday in 1978. So Ooh. I was four years old, and I actually okay. remember watching Battlestar Galactica in our house in San Jose, on the big TV set, in the living room. And so it, it's always kind of held a special place, because what four-year-old boy doesn't Aww. like spaceships and robots? Think about that. <laughs> what young what male... What 40-year-old boy doesn't like spaceships and robots? <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm, I'm super stoked about Blood and Chrome, which has been awesome so far. So really looking forward to seeing how, how that video series goes and then watching it when it premieres on the Sci-Fi Channel as, as the full-length uh, feature in February. Oh, cool. All right, so yeah, so Battle, Battlestar Galactica. I always want to say Battleship Galactica, but that's confusing with another bad sci-fi movie. Um, anyway, but yes, yeah, Battlestar Galactica. So there have been two, aside from the new kind of web-based series, there have been two series. Um, and can you tell me, what, like, how are the two series similar? Are they exactly the same, or are they just a little bit alike? Well, the first one was, you know, premiered in 1978, and the second series premiered in 2004. And so they are each a reflection okay. of their time. In the 1978 series, we are deep in the Cold War. It's an anti-detente mm -hmm. message at the beginning when, when you look at, at the first one. And even if you think the president of the colonies in the first one had a striking resemblance to Jimmy Carter, who was president at the time. And they're on this way to this peace <laughs> treaty. And they, the colonies get duped in and betrayed and get wiped out. And it's just the Galactica whose commander realizes something's not right and disobeys orders and is the guy who ends up saving humanity. Uh, so there's a very, you know, detente in the, in the early 70s under Nixon and Ford was this we could, you know, coexist with the Soviet Union. And detente became very uh, unpopular as, you know, the 70s went on and the Cold War was not, you know, you know, going away, but, you know, getting, getting, you know, looking like it turned into a hot war. And so there was a very, I think there's an anti-detente message in the original. The second series is a full-on, you know, war on terror. And while the first one had some op optimistic, you know, tones to it, it is, you don't know who the villain is, you don't know because they look like you, they could be anybody. And so there are some definite issues with, with fear, and, you know, the war that we, we fought for a decade that's still going on. All right. Well, that's kind of a little bit depressing. So how are the two uh, versions different? Well, in the original series, right. you, know, you had, you know, the Adama family included a sister, Athena, who was one of the bridge officers. And in the second series, she doesn't exist. Great name. Yeah, yes. Yes. Now, granted, one of the Cylons who turns into a colonial warrior gets the call sign Athena. So that that happens a little later on. Okay. But when you look at that difference, so the Adama family is just a little different. Now, there are two brothers, and one does get killed, but killed for different reasons. They play around with a few of the characters. Some of, some of the characters who are, you know, male in the you know original one are, are female characters and very different people. Uh, and in the follow-up, and so you have also a, a grittier tone in the second one. You know, with with you know humanity getting wiped out and billions dead, and you know only you know forty some thousand people surviving, and that number keeps going down as the series goes on. Uh, you know, it's it's like all the therapists <laughs> and the comfort puppies were also killed, and so you have everyone's just suffering and everyone's miserable because <laughs> there's like no break from you know being hunted. You also have some different issues. 
different issues oh. with the original series, they actually ran into aliens. And in, in the Cylons were an alien species. And the second one, man creates the Cylons. Now, we won't get into Caprica and everything that's in Caprica, oh. but there are differences there, and they don't okay. run into any alien species. And uh, you also had more outposts with huh. human beings that were like from the, you know, from the 13 colony or 12 colonies that were like out there and other remnants of humans who were left behind on their way to the 13th colony, which was Earth. The original series also has everyone practicing a one god religion. And in the second series, the colonies have a multi-deity religion. And so it's very, you know, Greek type mythology type type that they have, which again touches into Caprica with the with a one god of movement, and the Cylons follow one god as you know as well. So you have some differences there on just how their societies worked, and so which which is very interesting. And you can see the echoes from the original series, you know, in the second series because they did you know 24 or 25 episodes the first time around back when TV series actually did you know. 25 episodes uh, in a season. So those are yeah. just, just some of the differences. You know, grittier, less optimism, uh, brutal, uh, phenomenal war story. <gasps> phenomenal war story. All right, but more depressing. Yes. Maybe I'll stick with the first one. Um, so okay, so we're the legal geeks. So I've got the geek side now. So what's the legal side? Are there legal issues that came up, let's say, in the original uh, series? Yeah. So <clears throat> you have a child character that has a single mom, and his name's Boxy. And there's a scene where Boxy is left alone with the Galactica fighter pilots, and the Galactica fighter pilots are drinking around him, teaching him how to play cards. You know, there's probably swearing. You know, something else that was consistent in both series was saying frack. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, it was, you know, first uttered by Starbuck oh, in the, yeah, in the you know, in the original series. But you have some serious, like, you know, you know, uh, you know, not child endangerment, but like, you know, child delinquency issues, where, where, you know, you have you've left the fighter pilots to take care of a kid, and what do they do? They do fighter pilot things. They're playing cards and they're drinking, and they have one of the the female characters comes in and she provides the adult supervision, going like, "What are you doing?" with this like eight year old boy and takes the kid, you know, covering the eyes. It's like don't pay no attention to the bad men. And it's like it's like, okay, yeah. cute. So, you know, they had they had, you know, the woman be the adult supervision to the guys. You had mm -hmm. in one of the episodes entitled Murder on the Rising Star, you have Starbuck who is charged with a murder. And so they have a trial. And Boomer ends up having to play lead uh protector, their, their version of uh, defender, public, for a public defender, and he botches an objection. And so the issue was like facts, not in evidence. And so he, but he completely blows the objection. He gets it wrong. And with, you know, Commander Adama sitting, you know, as, you know, as head of the tribunal, you know, says something to the effect of, you know, like, you know, totally horrible objection, but you're right, <laughs> and, so, and, and stops it. So they, they, had, they had some fun there. So they, there is a trial scene in the original. And then you have um, Apollo. Okay. Eventually, you know, in the first six episodes, I believe, ends up marrying uh, the, the single mom, who becomes a fighter pilot as well. Boxing and mom. and she ends up getting killed, okay. because you, you can't get married in one episode without getting killed in the next one. And so you have Apollo <laughs> becomes a dad. And so they never really ad address adoption, but you know, the, the little boy Boxy, you know, oh. refers to his Apollo as dad. And so and as, you know, Commander Adama's grandpa. And so they never really touch on the adoption issue, oh. like step parent step parent adoption, but that was obviously had to have been addressed. And it was addressed in a very, you know, nineteen seventies you know, the, you still see the echo of like lassie sweetness, you know, in, in the television series. But you know, that was just one of those things that that they did yeah. again to, to the original. So there there are little issues like that, that that pop up across the original. You also have a big issue with no one being able to follow orders. And you know, it was less pronounced in the original. 
Uh, but that's the entire reason they su survive is, you know, Commander Adama realizes something ain't right here, right. so I'm going I'm to run a combat drill. I know, even though I'm not supposed to go to battle stations, I'm going to run a combat drill, and that's how he's able to, to have everyone ready. He, he also has the ability ah. um, to realize that you have council members who are practicing a perverse form of not just a taunt, but flat out appeasement. So the Cylons have wiped out a significant portion of humanity, and they're on this planet going like, well, if we just disarm, absolutely disarm, the Cylons will try, stop trying to commit genocide on us if we just give up and pretend like nothing's wrong. Oh. And that doesn't work, and they're able to avoid that. But it's like the worst <laughs> extreme form of appeasement that you can imagine, that if we disarm the people who are trying to annihilate us yeah. will somehow leave us alone. It would just make them easier to slaughter. And, be, and Adama realizing this, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, doesn't follow orders. And, you know, hides men and keeps them in, you know, combat-ready yeah. positions. So when the attack comes, they're able to defend themselves. So again, there's a lot of, I'm going to not follow the civilian leader's orders because he's going to get everybody killed. <laughs> and that's Well, I series. think American movies, you can do almost a whole study on that. That's the first series. I think American movies love to have that, right? People who don't follow, like, their, uh, their you know, commanding officers or the civilian officers' orders. Kind of. I mean, even that's just happened in The Avengers, right? Mm -hmm. With... Uh, Nick Fury not obeying the uh, orders to bomb Manhattan. Because so. yeah, it was a stupid order, you know, and we're not going to do that. And so you do a, I, it. It's also a, it's a very American. Americans don't like to follow orders. <laughs> we'll follow loyalty, and like, and that will override. And we will, you know, there's a battlefield trust mm -hmm. that you generally see with Americans more so than anyone else. And that was one of the reasons why we won World War II, because we're kind of unpredictable. You know, we'll start a plan and then just kind of like keep uh -huh. going and improvise along the way. And, that, <laughs> and the Germans didn't like that. <laughs> All right, so now back to Battlestar. So what yeah. are the legal issues in the second series? A bunch. And so there's like, you know, we could go for like a two hours straight on all the legal issues in there. So let's just do some <laughs> of the highlights that people can see. You know, when, when uh, the Secretary of Education, Rosalind, is, is sworn in as the president of the colonies, and like she's down on like you know the way 50s, you know, in the line of secession. So you know that means like some bad, you know, a lot of dead people are you know, in her way. <laughs> she's sworn in by a priest, and like we don't do that. So the the line of like church and state is very different mm -hmm. in their culture. You had hmm. when, when when the Pegasus comes along. You know, and, and even before that, you have a lot of the ends justifying the means just to survive. You know, and that yeah. when, when Pegasus comes along, we have seen issues where, you know, the Pegasus, you know, commander, Admiral Kane, had one of the Cylon, you know, females as a prisoner, and they had no problem with torture and rape to get information from her because she was a machine, therefore it's okay because she's a machine. And so you had the people from Galactico are co going like, we have a huge problem with this. We are not OK with that. And so you had issues with that. And so they touched on basically a lot of the things that were happening in the news you know, throughout the War on Terror. You know, there was enhanced interrogations to flat yeah. out torture. Uh, when there are, you, know, you have mm -hmm. uh, Rosalind looking to steal the presidential election from Baltar, because he's giving false promises of hope, and the public wants to go along with it. And she decides to rig the presidential election. She eventually changes her mind, so they don't go all the way Whoa. through with it. But, um, uh, but basically throws in the hat after, after one of them gets caught with all the fixed ballots. And so you've had issues there. When they're on New Cap, uh -huh. uh, you have Colonel Ty, who's using suicide bombers. And so you have the good guys using suicide bombers because that, wow. and so they touched on that. When you get to, you know, the you know eventual trial of Baltar, who was elected president and then unconditionally surrendered to the Cylons when when they got in, there is phenomenal witch, uh, witness impeachment of Colonel Ty because he shows mm -hmm. up, cool. he shows up drunk. You have the issue with the suicide bombers. He killed his wife. 
because she was sleeping with a Cylon in order to get his freedom and turning information over, so she was playing double agent and he killed her. Uh, problems there. And you had Rosalind, who was also starting to suffer from her cancer, came back and was on a cancer drug that caused hallucinations. And so there's brilliant witness impeachment, you know, throughout there. You also have wow, then Leah cool. Dama. You have Leah Dama, who's the defense attorney, one of the defense attorneys, take the stand and talks about, you know, how there was the attempted military coup that was for, forgiven, you know, how his commanding officer of the Pegasus, he ignored his father's orders to go save them during the liberation of New Caprica, and just, you know, a bunch of other things that just showed forgiveness. And so Baltar is, you know, acquitted of, of the initial crimes. Now, part of the problem with that is while the prosecution didn't meet its case for that, there was a bunch of stuff they didn't charge him with since he turned over a nuclear weapon to one of the Cylons after they get to New Caprica, which that Cylon used to blow up one of the ships, which is how the other Cylons, you know, find them, you know, 400 some days later. So you have, you gave a nuclear weapon to the enemy. That would have been an awesome thing to have charged yeah. them with. There was other forms of, you know, you know <laughs> yeah. collusion that they could have charged them with uh, as well in, in collaborating with the enemy. So, but they, they didn't go there because they weren't a viewer that didn't have the knowledge that the viewers had, and so there, there are issues there. But there were a whole litany, of, ah. whole litany of other things that they could have charged him with or just had him shot. Uh, and eventually when there is a mutiny and a, and a coup by the vice president of the colonies and Gaeta and, and a few others, you know, when they take back the ship, there's no trial. They put them in an airlock, shoot them, and blow them out into space, which is a really efficient way to deal oh. with dissent when something that bad happens in a full-blown military coup and the assassination of political leaders. So the second series did a phenomenal job touching on many, many issues. Caprica touched on a bunch, and Blood and Chrome you know, I will touch on a few as well. And and one of the things that, that right out of the gate and, and blood and chrome that I thought was a little weird in, in watching the you know the first webisode is the bathrooms are co ed on the Galactica. So you have both genders showering in the same place. <laughs> Apparently everyone from HR and the JAG officers were dead because that's the only way something like that would slip through <laughs> and going, you know, hey, this seems like an okay plan. I mean, they had to be dead. No one in HR would let something like that happen in this day and age. So just just the little things. There. Well, it's the future. Maybe in the future they will. Yeah. It was the past. In the original series, it was 150,000 years in the past oh. because when they, when they get to Earth, oh. we're still... You know, we're still tribal and it's the beginning, so, which is a wonderful allusion to the original That's series. Because right. the original series begins with, there are those of us here who feel that life began once out there, with the forefathers of man came from the stars and they influenced the Egyptians and everything else. Well, the second series took that and wrote it. And so when they finally get to Earth, ah. and they come to Earth, you know, they're the forefathers of man. So, All right. Look just, at this. A chip in my geek reputation has been exposed. It's okay. You, that, that you had to dig deep for that one. You had to dig deep. <laughs> I do need to watch Battlestar Galactica, the new series, and then the webisodes, even though it sounds really depressing, everything you just told me. That's the problem with sci-fi sometimes. It can get so dark. It's, well, you know, keeping, all the therapists had to be dead, and no one brought a comfort puppy. You know, like that's... <laughs> So, you know, when you're being hunted, you know, there's some serious stuff there, but it was brilliant. You know, they wrote, they did such a good job writing. Yeah. And it was, it was a phenomenal series. And when Caprica didn't have enough time to really get going, and, you know, Blood and Chrome, you know, yeah. has started out strong, and I hope it continues that way. All right, and cool. Well, maybe if it does, we can talk about that at some future post. Oh, definitely, after we see all of them, so. Very good. Well, well Jessica, you know, uh, I, so say we all. <laughs> Let's, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Stay geeky. Stay geeky, America. Stay geeky. <laughs>